Welcome to Voice of Judea Television. I'm your host, Yikutiel Ben Yaakov, and I'm going to bring you some news from the perspective of the authentic Jewish idea, as we do every Thursday. This program is dedicated today to a specific judge in Jerusalem by the name of Yael Yitav. I appeared before Yael Yitav actually twice today on two different trials. The same subject, the same exact case, but two different trials. And let me explain to you a little bit about what happened today and about the absurdity of the Israeli judicial system here. About a year ago, we made a conference concerning the state of Judea, concerning the Judean initiative, concerning the will of Jews to remain in Judea and Samaria, and an effort that we are trying to convey to the public and trying to raise support for, which is a plan, a plan of action for Jews to remain in Judea and Samaria, even if, God forbid, the Israeli government continues with their suicidal plans to relinquish and surrender these areas to the PLO and to the Hamas. But we've come together, hundreds of Jews, and we've decided that we want to try and devise a way, a plan, in which Jews can remain in these areas under some form of Jewish sovereignty, even if, God forbid, the government decides to surrender these areas. We don't have all the answers. In fact, we don't have most of the answers. But we know that this is a necessary topic that needs to be discussed and that Jews need to get together and to see what can be done to entertain the possibility of Jews remaining in these areas. It's not illegal to speak about. We're not talking about violating any laws. We're not talking about a rebellion against the state of Israel. We're not talking about killing Arabs. We're talking about Jews trying to exercise their right to live in, as Jews in areas part of Eretz Israel, the most important biblical cities in Israel, if we don't have a right to Hebron and Shechem, then what right have we to Tel Aviv? And to the coffee shops on Dizengorf and to Haifa. Abraham didn't sip coffee in those coffee shops and didn't walk the streets of Haifa, but he did live and was buried in Hebron and other important cities like Shechem and Jerusalem because they're speaking of relinquishing, God forbid, neighborhoods in Jerusalem. And so yes, we as Jews want to discuss our right to remain in these areas and, and how we can begin to, to create a contingency plan so that when the time comes there could be some hope for a continuation of Jewish life in these areas. And make no mistakes, if Jews can't live in Judea and Samaria and Gaza then they can't live in Sterot or Ashkelon or Tel Aviv or Haifa because we already see what's going on in Sterot. We gave away those lands, and those very areas are being used as the launching pad for rockets on Sterot and Ashkelon and Sun Ashdod. And that's exactly what will happen if and when, God forbid, Israel leaves, leaves Judea and Samaria. So it's not just a question of Jewish life in Judea and Samaria, it's a question of survival for the entire state of Israel. And so we decided to have a conference last year, but the government was petrified of this conference. What didn't they do to try and stop us from exercising our basic democratic right of holding this conference. They came to Tepuach, because in Tepuach I happened to run another program that used to be known as the Jewish Le Legion. It's a canine unit that defends settlements with the use of specially trained dogs. Now, of course, the Jewish Legion is not an illegal project. It's a life-saving security project. In fact, we've given many dogs to the Israeli army and police. But the fact that I, Yikuti Ben Yaakov, happens to be running this conference that was supposed to be held last year that they very much did not want to happen. So they came to Tepuach and confiscated many of our dogs and shut down the kennels and forced us actually to shut the Jewish Legion down. I mean, we continue to raise dogs and we continue to protect settlements with the use of dogs and we continue to bring these dogs to settlements and to train security personnel, but we do it now as individual Jews. In fact, we call ourselves Yehudim Maminim, believing Jews, God-fearing Jews, because the Jewish Legion kennels and the Jewish Legion has been officially shut down by the Israeli government in their efforts to try and squash this conference that happened last year. 
They also came to a private business that we owned in Jerusalem, the Internet Cafe. And those of you that have been watching the shows, you saw footage of all that, of how they came and shut down our kennels and confiscated equipment and dogs, and how they came to a private business in Jerusalem that we were a part of, that we helped manage, an Internet Cafe, and they actually welded the door shut. I kid you not, in the country that calls itself a democracy, in Israel, the Israeli authorities did everything in their power to destroy us, to destroy me personally. But we continued with our plans to make the conference, and more and more people were calling. And in fact, hundreds of people attended this conference, in spite of the very many obstacles that they placed in our way. They went to Yeshiva Kotel, the Yeshiva that had rented us a hall. The Shin Ben and the police threatened the Rosh Yeshiva there, and of course they're dependent on government funding. And they backed out of a, of a written contract that we had with them and canceled the event. We were forced to move it to the Diplomat Hotel, which is a logistical nightmare for anyone that's ever organized an event like this. But still hundreds were in attendance. But that wasn't enough. They also opened dozens of files against me for allegedly posting up posters for this Judean conference illegally. The fact that it had nothing to do with the posters, the fact that I did not put the posters up, that was of no interest to them. And sure enough, the summonses came by the hundreds. For each poster that was put up, in a, separate, a separate ticket and a separate indictment. Right now, I'm still in the midst of ten separate trials, separate trials, separate indictments on the same posters that were put up in different neighborhoods in Jerusalem. Some of the trials I've been found not guilty on. I was even awarded a thousand shekels in one of the trials. But, unfortunately, in some of these uh, trials I've been found guilty. I tried to merge the cases, which is common practice in Israel. If you're being tried for a crime or a similar crime, in this case it's the very same crime. We're talking about the very same poster. But, of course, they refused to merge the, the, uh, the case. That they only do for rapists and murderers and thieves. And so here I am, every other day, rushing to Jerusalem to a different trial for the same poster before different judges. And sometimes it's even before the same judge I can have a back-to-back -back trial, as is the case with Yael Yitav. In the circus today in Jerusalem, I actually was to appear before Yael Yitav twice. Once to give my summaries for one of the cases concerning this very same poster. And once again to ask her to cancel the verdict and the sentencing concerning another one of these trials. Because something very interesting happened. I was tried in abstentia in one of these trials before this very same judge, Jael Yitav. For some reason, they did not have my proper address. I mean, all the other trials, I think there's nine in total, or ten in total, all the other trials, I was receiving the subpoenas to my house in Tapur. But for this particular one, before Yael Yitav, which is the second one I have before on the same case, I never got the subpoena and I never showed. Otherwise, I come to every single trial. I get there early to argue my case, to fight for justice in a system of injustice. Nonetheless, I'm there. I said to Yael Yitav, how could it be that I was tried in abstentia and that I couldn't be found when I'm being tried before you on this very same crime? And in fact, I'm giving you the summaries for that case. She said, I don't care, 17,000 shekel fine is what, you were, uh, is what my verdict, what my sentencing is against you. And if you do not pay it, you will be arrested. There is already an arrest warrant out for you, and you'll have to sit in prison for 106 days. I said, but that's insane. You know that I'm here. You know that I've been here for the other case. Why would I come for nine other trials, not for this one? She said, it doesn't matter to me. I said, okay, at the very least, let's delay it until Sunday so I have time to appeal this in district court, which is common practice in Israel. If you're free and you have not yet been arrested and you'd like to uh, appeal um, a sentencing to a higher court, you can do that. And usually it's, it's automatic. They'll delay it for a week or for two weeks or until the higher court renders their decision. She said, no. And she said, in fact, I suggest that you leave the building because you are very liable to get arrested since there already is... Uh, um, a, a, a warrant out for your arrest. And so this is what's going on in the state of Israel. They will stop at nothing to persecute those who offer alternative, Jewish alternatives, the only alternatives that can save Israel. I mean, there's two paths that Israel can take. Israel can take the path of fear of the Gentiles and caving into international opinion and juggling around 
world opinion and, and the little bit that we can get by and do. Or having faith in God and doing that which we need to do to survive and that which God obligates us to do. If we take the war in Lebanon, for example, it means going in there without mercy, destroying towns. Yes, innocent civilians might very likely get killed if they're harboring terrorists in those towns in southern Lebanon. But that's how you fight a war. You don't fight a war with hesitation, worrying about what the world is going to say. The life of Jews in Israel and of Jewish citizens is more important than the life of civilians, Arab civilians who are harboring terrorists. There is not a war that's fought and that's won without innocent civilians getting killed in the process. That's ha that happens in any war. The United States never would have won the war in World War II had they not bombed indiscriminately in towns like Dresden. Not to mention Japan. That's how we won the war. And that's how Israel needs to fight the war if we expect to win the war here. But instead we have a frightened, myopic, timid government as we have always had since Israel's rebirth in 1948 that is frightened to take a stand, that is frightened to do that which they need to do to protect its citizens. And when people like me come along and offer a Jewish alternative, a Torah alternative, the only other alternative to this madness, to this suicide process, to this surrender policy, to this policy of hesitation and fear of the Gentiles. So we are arrested and we are persecuted and we are put on trial and dozens of trials, but it will not stop us because we have faith in God and because we will not, we will never ever uh, cave in and, and give in because we are the last hope for Israel. If we stop preaching the truth, the Torah truth, that we know to be the Torah truth and the only program that can save Israel, then there is no hope. But there will always be hope and Israel will eventually win. And it's our responsibility, obligation, to continue to speak this truth until, until the great day when the powers are forced by the people, by the God-fearing Jews, to make that revolutionary change that's so necessary to bring the redemption. I want to speak to you just briefly about a few other stories that were in the news this week. And we have a very interesting story about the German bishops who have come to Israel. And they compared... They compared, get this, they went to visit Yad Vashem and then, our, then they went later in that same day to visit Ramallah. And they compared what they saw in Yad Vashem. They compared the Warsaw Ghetto. They compared the gas chambers. They compared the Nazi behavior to the behavior of the Israelis against our Arab enemies in Ramallah. They compared Ramallah, Ghetto Ramallah, they compared to Ghetto Warsaw. How sick. How twisted, how anti-Semitic, and people ask how, the, how there was a Holocaust, and if there could be another Holocaust. Look around you, look at the vicious, virulent Jew hatred of all people, the audacity. Who needs these Germans, who needs these Goyim at Yad Vashem to lay there, to, to bring their, their flowers? Who needs them here? Who needs their love? You can't by the love of the Gentiles. You can gain their respect by having some self-respect, but you can't buy their love. We're going to show them Yad Vashem, and you see all the op-ed pieces in the Israeli media. But the problem is we don't have good public relations. We don't reach out enough to explain Israel's position to the Germans, to the Goyim, to the United Nations. That's the problem. Israel is ranked, there was a BBC poll taken this week, and Israel is ranked the most hated nation, the most dangerous nation in the world, even after Iran. Israel is, is the lowest on the totem pole. The Arabs are planting the bombs. The Arabs are crashing into the World Trade Center. The Arabs are committing acts of terrorism in Spain and in France and in England and in the United States. And who's blamed? The Jew. The Jew is the scapegoat. And people look for logic. They look for a scientific answer to understand anti-Semitism. They blame the victim, the Jew. He doesn't have good enough public relations. He doesn't look pretty enough. He didn't allow the Arabs to kill enough Jews this week. He stood up too much to the Arabs, fought back a little bit. We're the problem. Silly, silly Jews that have learned nothing from Jewish history. Our rabbis teach us, Halacha biyadu asha Esav sonel Yaakov. It's a, it's a rule of nature. It's a law that Esav hates Jacob. Don't try and seek logic in it. Don't, don't. Blame public relations. These German Nazis came here, and they see, they see, they see 
Tzahal, the IDF, as being Nazis because they want to see the Jews dead. Because they are Nazis. So naturally, those who defend Jews are Nazis in their eyes. And let it be. I want to wish you a foolish lema, a speedy recovery to Daniel Ben Yehuda. He is a Jew who was stabbed in Yerushalayim, in our holy city of Yerushalayim, in the center of town, in Rehov Koresh. You probably didn't hear his name, because they're not going to say, they're not going to mention his name on CNN. Had an Arab been stabbed in Jerusalem, be sure that they'd be talking about the massacre in Jerusalem. <coughs> Excuse me. But it was a Jew. Even the Israeli media, I haven't seen one article speak of Daniel Ben Yehuda, who was injured. He was stabbed three times, his head was split open. He's lying in a hospital bed in Shari Tzedek, and no one's ever heard his name or heard this story. I happen to know about it because he happens to be one of my neighbors in Kfar Tapuach. And I know for a fact that it's true because I visited him in Shari Tzedek Hospital on Purim. And this happened on Purim. We've come home to Israel after thousands of years of exile, after being mocked and beaten and persecuted throughout the exile. We've come home to Israel for Jews to be frightened to walk on the streets of Yerushalayim in the center of town on Purim and they don't even have the decency to publish to publish the story as if it never happened this is what's happening here in Israel there is an answer of course there's an answer Jews to stand tall and proud to fight back and to try and convince other Jews to try and force change in Israel and that was one of the reasons why we are floating a referendum in Israel, where we offer people a choice, an independent referendum, because that's what we need. We need people to start to think independently and to operate independently and not to rely on their local rabbi or their local teacher or their local politician to save them. Every Jew has to show faith in God and has to do everything in his power to bring about the necessary change in Israel. I'd like to invite you all next Thursday to join us once again for Voice of Judea Television news we doubt you've seen views we doubt you've heard elsewhere from the perspective of the authentic Jewish idea until next Thursday Shalom Ulehitraot